It is currently about 9.30 a.m. Wednesday, April 13, 2022. And um, I haven't been vlogging for a while. Uh, I've just been super busy. Basically, I've been looking after the baby full time uh, while my wife is working. And uh, anyway, I thought I'd pick it up again just to give myself uh, a creative outlet. Now, I have been doing some bird photography lately. Maybe there are some videos of that on my channel. Um, but like those videos take a long time to put together. I want something that's like fast. Um, and so I think vlogs are that. Uh, anyway, this morning I came across uh, this video on YouTube. Um, I'll put his channel info there, I guess. Um, but yeah, he's like a photographer. I don't know the details, but he, he seems to be a photographer that does a lot of behind the scenes shoots uh, at, uh, you know, movie studios or TV studios. He, he got some great shots using this uh, Fuji XC 15 to 45 millimeter kit lens uh, in that video that I, I just showed you. And uh, it's inspiring. You know, um, really makes me want to uh, give this guy a go again. Because mostly right now, um, it's the um, XF 35mm F2 that's been living on the X-T200. But like when you see a good photographer and, and see what they can do with even sort of modest equipment, it's inspiring. It, it, it gets you sort of like, well, I should be able to do that. And so anyway, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm going to have to give that a try. Now he's a small channel. I think he only has a couple hundred, maybe less than 300 subscribers. Um, and um, yeah, I, I, I always find it interesting to find sort of new creators like that. Because sometimes you'll find creators with very low subscriber counts, but they have like incredible production value. These are people who clearly know what they're doing, but are just in the sort of beginning phases of their YouTube career. And um, uh, the thing, that's the thing with YouTube, is like you gotta put in years <laughs> before your channel um, blows up. Not everybody's like girlfriend reviews where like you put out three videos and then immediately you have a million subscribers, right? Most people, it takes years. Um, and, uh, but some people you just know, like you, you look at their production value and 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 um, it's clear that they're gonna grow. Um, so uh, another example that I like to talk about is Stefano Iannero. I found that guy's channel back when he only had maybe a few hundred subscribers and I watched his birding videos and they were fantastic. He's a very good, um, not just like photographer and videographer, but he's just, um, the way he presents information on on videos, it's it's excellent. Like he clearly knows what he's doing in terms of editing and all that stuff. You know, and it's not about fancy graphics. It's just about like flow, flow of information, and he's very good at it. And yeah, so when I when I saw first when I first saw his channel, um, you know, I straight up commented on his videos and I said like. I predict that your channel is going to blow up. And sure enough, his channel is blown up. I don't know his exact uh, subscriber count. I'll put it up here. But it must be in the tens of thousands by now. Um, to the point where he's like kind of at the level of like Mark Smith, you know? So anyway, I, I think that's I think that's very interesting. Another channel, I, I won't claim to have discovered this guy, but like... Um, Penguin Zero. So he was already pretty big when I found him. Um, but he had, I want to say, under 2 million subscribers when I found him. And um, and now he's like at 10 million. <laughs> so that's another example of finding a channel that you just know is going to blow up. Now his channel isn't sort of notable for having incredible production value. Uh, no, his channel is just interesting because he finds interesting things to talk about. And uh, he's kind of pretty good at giving like single take, single take 
rants that it doesn't feel rambly you know uh yeah his sort of potty humor probably gonna put some people off but uh the sort of uh rapidity of content from that channel and the fact that he's, he covers interesting topics and the fact that he uh, uh presents it well i knew he was gonna just like explode <laughs> anyway uh so that's that I, I don't know what's gonna happen with this uh photographer channel that i was talking about this guy uh because as it turns out he's ukrainian <laughs> and that video that i i showed you that was posted like five or six months ago and um you know now uh, ukraine is in turmoil uh because of the russian invasion so i don't know what's happened to him i I hope he's safe. Um, now, for what it's worth, uh, if you look at the video's comments, uh, I think there's a comment from as recent as two months ago, which is like still a little bit before the invasion. Not by much, though. So, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. So, uh, what else is there to talk about today? So, I want to finish a video on... Um, bird feeder photography um, but that's taking a little while just because like with bird feeder photography you get so many pictures and you have to sort through all of them and edit them and I don't know a lot of it's just me putting it off I guess because um, of the baby too it's hard to shoot videos with a baby right uh, you know I don't mind holding a baby and <laughs> shooting a video the problem is the audio because the baby constantly will be fussing or making noises sometimes cute noises but usually crying noises <laughs> so um anyway I'll, i hope to get to that today i caught a red-tailed hawk in my backyard today uh, unfortunately I didn't get great photos of it because it was still pretty far and a crow chased it away before i could get the window open so i i basically only have shots through uh, a pane of glass a dirty pane of glass at that. What else? Well, uh, the weather is supposed to be pretty good today. So maybe uh, I will go outside and clean the windows a little bit. That's key to bird photography. Uh, cleaning these windows is going to be rough. <laughs> but I kind of have a an idea. Now I'll try and, try and film some of it. I got a chest mount uh, that I can use with this iPhone. So... We'll see. All right, it's about 1 p.m. and um, I've accomplished very little. <laughs> I did uh, zoom in to our tumor board meeting, so I guess there's that. Um, the other big thing is that I figured out that this lily carrier has a narrow seat uh, option. Um, so previously I just been using the, the wide seat I didn't know it was changeable and uh, you know that was something that really bugged me about this carrier because like the legs always seemed like it had to wrap right around me and of course for front facing it it would look like it'd be very uncomfortable for him um, but yeah with this narrow setting um, sorry I got the front panel rolled down but the narrow setting, like his legs are much more natural. And uh, I tried putting him so that he's facing forward as well. And it works better. So yeah, I'm really happy. And uh, I think he likes it. <laughs> I think he likes it better with the narrow seat. All right, so I said that I might clean the windows today, but I think I'm, I'm not gonna actually do that. And the reason is that I really should be studying. <laughs> I shouldn't be spending so much time doing bird photography. So I might put that off for later. I've set a goal to like study for at least two hours a day, which is not, which doesn't sound like a whole lot, but it's actually been pretty hard, especially looking after this guy. But what I think I will do is try and set up this guy on the feeder um, and see if I can get some high frame rate video of uh, birds landing and taking off. 
I have an idea for how to do that. And it's going to involve remote triggering it using my phone and using the end trigger function on the camera. And then, uh, yeah, the whole thing is going to be held in place using this clamp. Now, I don't know if I can get a power cable out to the camera, but I'll try. All right, so I've got the camera set up and you can see there's actually already a bird out there. A couple of birds. Oh, great. He's landing on my power cable. Oh my God, they're all over the power cable. So yeah, I've got the, my remote trigger set up right here for that camera up there. And I just triggered this uh, end trigger recording and it takes forever to record. Oh, there we go. All right, so now I'm on standby again. And when this bird takes off, I'm gonna hit the stop recording button and it'll give me the, the two seconds prior to that. I hope this works out. We'll see. Well, I just shot some high frame rate video using the uh, Sony RX0 Mark II and um, it went out, it, it went really well. Um, I'm really happy with the results. Now, all I got were some starlings. I got one chickadee, um, but uh, yeah, that's actually both good and bad, right? It's bad because you know, starlings are trash birds. They're uh, ubiquitous, not the most interesting bird to look at right um, but at the same time they also they're feisty they fight <laughs> they chase off other birds and they fight each other and so that did make for some interesting footage so anyway um i'm very happy with how that turned out i think 480 frames uh, per second is pretty good i wouldn't go any slower than that it would be pretty boring to look at um plus the quality would be really trash uh if i went to that kind of frame rate what else? Oh yeah, so, um, you know, obviously the remote app to trigger the camera, I mean, that sucks. You know, that's, it's just a crap app. It doesn't uh, maintain a very stable connection, so sometimes it just disconnects or uh, there could be like freezes and lags and, you know, you're not sure if you catch the, if you get the footage. The app sucks. What else? Oh yeah, I, I got the camera to overheat, right? Um, so doing uh, end trigger means like the camera's kind of, you know, recording, maybe not to the car, but to the buffer uh, constantly. And I also had it plugged in. So uh, it, it did uh, show me an overheating warning. Um, yeah, I, I did shoot it also without having it plugged in. Uh, you have to have end trigger. There's no way you can do that kind of stuff without an end trigger. But um, uh, shooting without it being plugged in, I did not run into overheating issues. Uh, however, I, you know, I did turn the sort of um, uh, temperature allowance to high. Uh, but the thing is, uh, uh, I also move the flip the screen up out of the way so the back is a bit more ventilated and then um yeah i killed the battery <laughs> uh so you know just shooting a few clips um was enough to kill the battery and it was pretty much near full uh so yeah the battery life on the rx0 mark ii absolutely blows uh 
uh, I would say in all, maybe recorded maybe five minutes of footage, uh, killed the whole battery. So anyway, that's it. I think the baby is calling for me. I gotta go check out what's going on. All right, it is uh, actually the next day. Uh, as you can see, it's daytime again. Um, uh, I didn't have a chance to conclude yesterday's vlog because I had a webinar from uh, 8 until 9.30 p.m. It was about my uh, boards. And uh, so, yeah, I thought I'd just conclude it today, you know. Um, I don't have a whole lot more to say. This is why I say that I had a lot of fun testing this guy out, the Sony RX0 Mark II. You know, um, it, I made a, a slow motion uh, bird video using this camera and it's a separate video um, on my channel. And um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. It, it's kind of a response to Scott's reviews, a recent video about the RX0 Mark II. It's it's a it's a very capable and very decent camera, um, but it is a special use type camera. You know, if you're going into it expecting that it's going to be the perfect action camera, it's going to disappoint you. If you go in thinking that it's going to be the perfect vlog camera, it's going to disappoint you. Um, it's got its uses, and as long as uh, you're using it for those purposes, um, I think you'll be pretty happy. Uh, and, you know, uh, uh, I got it for work for a very specific use, but it uh, turns out that, um, you know, it's got high frame rate as well. And so I found a different use for it yesterday uh, for bird videography. And uh, I, think, I think that's incredibly compelling because I think for most people, like this is their entry into true high frame rate video, right? because this guy can go up to 960 frames per second. My bird video yesterday was just at 480 because I think 960 is too slow. And plus the resolution gets progressively worse the faster the frame rate. Um, but yeah, for most people, this is their, this is gonna be their entry uh, into um, high frame rate video. Uh, now, not specifically the RX0 cameras because um, uh, truthfully, the RX100 and RX10 uh, and the ZV-E1 all have similar sort of high frame rate modes, um, but they're all one inch sensor cameras kind of like this. And, uh, and that's what I'm trying to get at is that um, this sort of one inch sensor camera is a lot of people's entry into high frame rate video. Um, because people probably aren't going to be spending money on phantoms and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, I had a lot of fun with this and um, I don't know, we'll see. Maybe I'll have more bird videos in the future. Uh, all right, that's it.